Shalom, all praises to Yahweh, Bar Shem, Yahweh Shai, Bar Shem, Kudash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And Shalom to the whole four elect. Uh, this is a biblical commentary on the book of Acts, the ninth chapter. And it reads And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest. Alright, now Saul. Who is Saul? Saul is who everyone knows as the Apostle Paul, okay? One of the most diligent <clears throat> apostles, having really pretty much of um, most of the New Testament pertaining to himself, all right, with all of his epistles, okay? Um, and um, this was before he got his name changed to, to Paul, right? And he was, his name was Saul, all right? So let's read on. Let's read it again, actually. It says, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the, to the synagogues. All right, and I just want to highlight that it says, breathing out threatenings, all right? And we know breath. In the spiritual sense, pertains to the spirit, all right, and um, also pertains to life as well. So I wanna just wanna want you to bear that in mind as we read on. So it says that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound onto Jerusalem. So he wanted license from the high priest to basically bound anyone that spoke his name, if you have a shy, all right, and. Rem just to kind of remind you what what happened prior to this. You had, um after the death of Stephen, you basically had the, the disbursement of, um or diaspora of um of Israel in in uh, in Judea, all right? And, and different parts within that landmass, Judea, um, Samaria, so on and so forth, where they were scattered to in hopes of not being um, persecuted as, as Stephen was as well. All right. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. All right. And we know the Lord, Yah, our Lord, Yahweh Shai, is known as the light of the, of the light of the world. All right. The, or the light. All right. And, and this is a, him revealing himself unto Paul. All right, or Saul, shall I say? And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Yahweh Shai, whom thou persecutest. All right, so the Lord is speaking to him, as you can see, it's written in red. All right. So it says it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Now, what does it mean when you say the this saying, this idiom, as it also could be known, proverb, all right? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Is it talking about a prick, a spur, a gold that is utilized? A prick, which is basically like a spur or a gold, which is utilized to what to gold on a, a beast. All right, for a desired movement, all right, and what would happen is when they were pricked, they'll basically um you know defend themselves at the, at the against the pain and and really in in vain kick against the prick, so it's like you've been they get poked and they kick against it like who's touching me kind of thing as a reaction to defend themselves, but it's vanity. That's why the Lord said it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks, because the Lord He's kicking against the golden of the heavenly of Yahweh Shai, should I say, right? And it's, it's to none to no avail, as we can see with this event that's happening. Verse six, and he trembled and astonished said, and he trembled and he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. So he, he didn't even, it weren't no, oh, you, you're wicked, you're going off. He just 
said, Lord, what, what do you want me to do? And that really shows you, like, I believe it's in the book of Hebrews where it says, the word, the, uh, the word, to, the word did not profit them being not mixed with faith. Lucy paraphrasing, it's escaped me how it's, it's, it's said at this point in time. But basically, you know, seeing is believing, man. <laughs> it, his faith was was given to him. The gift of faith was dispensed unto him in this moment, whereby he believed in Yahweh Shai instantly. All right? And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man, and saw a rose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by one, by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. Now you can imagine the amount of psh, where this man was at, having been given the gift of, you know, the, the grace of the gift of faith. And to understand that everything he had been doing even what he was on the onset of doing to go and continue in persecuting the church of Yahweh Shai, that he must have really, you know, felt it, man. That even though the Lord presented himself, you know, in um in a fashion that he did and told it and instructed him for, for what he should do, he still was under punishment because he was made blind, all right? So you can imagine those three days, all right, where he had no sight, he was blind, blind, and the sight that he only had, it was it's like meditation. They say, clear your mind, empty your mind, see nothing. All that he was able to see is what, all these memories, and you could imagine that all of the acts that he done against the church was just racing through his mind. He didn't eat or drink, you know. That shows it's, that's a form of chastising his soul. So you know, through the spirit, he was in a very um words round the tip of my tongue man um uh he was in a solemn um spirit spirit of solemnity solemnity if that's how you pronounce it all right verse 10 so it says and there was a certain disciple at Dam damascus named ananias all right or hananiah as it'll be known in the hebrew which is hanan uh yeah which means favored of the most high and to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. All right. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. All right. And you have seen a vision, uh, in a vision, a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him. That he might receive his sight. <laughs> I'll just realize this now. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I've heard um, by many of this man how much evil have he have done to thy saints at Jerusalem. Now, you see the difference. Saul that persecuted the church, alright. He basically the moment the Lord revealed himself to him instantly, then question, what shall I do? He said, who are you, Lord? And then he said who he is. And he said, what shall I do? And he told him what to do. And that was that. Now, the nice has appeared to, the, the Lord appeared to him in a vision. And he seems a bit wary about what he's being told to do by the Lord. All right. And this is a man in the faith, right, within the body of Yahweh Shai. And it just brings me to mind of um, the parable Yahweh Shai put forth where he spoke of um, the woman, uh, the woman that um basically I believe he went into he was entertained in the man's house, Simon, I believe he I remember his name was Simon. I believe he was of like a a, a scribe or something of, of great rank within the nation of Israel and he brought him into his house and the woman came also and she was basically showing you how it's a totally different function. She came in to the house as well. The, you know, the houses are open doors. But she was basically wiping his feet with her tears, man. And um, basically, um, I, I'm, I think I'm getting the two mixed up, man. Because there's another one where it says about a debt being wiped off. and um, But you can look it up, all right? 
and basically the look, only the, the story goes that if you committed, you know, the greater sins you've committed, the greater uh, thanks you'll give unto the Lord because he's removing a higher debt from you. All right. And that's how I'm looking at it because, you know, Paul, Saul showed himself in this occasion that, look, man, he, he didn't have no questions. But Ananias was a bit skeptical about what the Lord was asking him to do. Verse 13, then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard uh, by many of this man how much evil he have done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he have authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on, their, on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, go thy way. For he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. The Lord had to set, him, set it straight. Look, this man is a chosen vessel. He's going to do great things to the Gentiles, kings and all the children of Israel, and the children of Israel, should I say. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And even that, church, that three days of no sight, no food or water. Shows a great chastisement unto his spirit. Alright. And Ananias went his way. And entered into the house. And put in his hands. On him said. Brother Saul. The Lord even Yahweh That appeared unto thee. In the way as thou camest. Have sent me. That thou mightest receive thy sight. And be, and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately. There fell from his eyes as it had been scales. All right, let me even just slow down. I might be missing something through the spirit. So I said, uh, so I read from it says, and putting in his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Yahweh Shai, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, have sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. All right, so he's going to endow him with the Holy Spirit. Okay, the truth, the new breath. He that walketh out the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Where there is no vision. See, this is why I had to go back. <laughs> where there is no vision, the people perish. So ultimately, what happened? He died for a moment. All right, but it's the old man who's putting off the old man to be put upon the new man. And have the breath of life filled within him. As opposed to the breath that he breathed at the beginning. Alright. Where it was against speaking against Yahweh Shai. Now he was going to breathe a new breath speaking in favor of Yahweh Shai. Alright. In accordance with the Holy Spirit. With what Yahweh Shai had planned with him. Him being a chosen vessel. So verse 18. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales. Now, when you think about scales, you think about, I, I think about animals. First, I thought about fish, but then I thought about what happens when a snake sheds its skin. It has scaly skin, all right, sheds its scales or sheds its skin, all right? And basically, it's, 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 it's grown, it's become, you know, new, a new, uh, a new, so to speak, all right? And we're instructed to be what harmless as dove, but wise as what harmless as doves, but wise as serpents. So it just made me think about that. All right. So those scales felt like a, he's always peeling away. That's part of him, you know, becoming a new man as well, peeling away that old, that old person he was. All right, and he received his sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. Um, and when he had received meat he was strengthened then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at uh, Damascus and straightway he preached Hamashiach in the synagogues that he is the son of the Most High but all that heard him were amazed and said is not this he that destroyed them which called on the name in on this name in Yerushalayim and came hither from for that intent that he might bring them bound onto the chief priests. All right. So it shows you he did a total U-turn. He came to destroy uh, Jake that spoke, you know, Israel, the, the, the elect, the chosen men that spoke favorably of Yahweh Shai, all right, at that time. And then why not 
on on the way to doing so, landing there and actually speaking in alongside them as well. All right. Verse 22, but Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very anointed. All right. So he was pro he actually proved that the Lord was the anointed. He was given a, 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 a tongue that none of his uh, enemies could gainsay. And after that, many days were fulfilled. The Jews took counsel to kill him. So they, you know, now that I've told, have I become your enemy? Now that, uh, now that I've told you the truth, Lucy paraphrasing. But there laying await, but there laying await was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples, but they were. But they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. All right. So at first they, they were really stand off. They weren't, you know, they didn't have open arms. They came in the same way that Ananias came. Like, you, you, you sure this guy's really, you know, down with the cause. And really, you know, they're being wise. All right. Because they understood stood that. You know, they were being killed, all right? They were, they were being persecuted, so it was, it was a wise move, all right? And the Lord had spies that were sent before him, and they desired to kill him on many occasions. So they were doing the right thing in, in, in being mindful of, of someone such as Saul could be playing that same game. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Yahweh And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem, Yerushalayim. And he spoke boldly in the name of the Lord Yahweh and the spirit against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him. So hold on, what's going on here? We read before that they were the Jews, but now when we read down here as the Grecians. Now, when you look up the word there in the Greek, it's the word Hellenistas. Helen, uh, Helen, Hellenistas, all right? Which basically means a Greek speaking Jew. Now, they have another word, Helen, which they claim is um, any nation that basically, you know, spoke Greek except from the Jews. So it would have really, but then at the same time, in if in this, if if you use Helen, it means it's a, it's straight out Greek. Now that would mean there'll be one actual definition I'll be missing because I checked the root word of it all, and the main root was actually Greek or more so your one which pertains to, you know, the original Greeks, being the descendants of um, Japhet, the right? Um, so that's missing, all right. What's what's the one that's missing and what's the one that's outstanding? A Jew that wouldn't have known that he was a Jew, but he would have thought he was a Greek, all right? Because he would have grew up in the that as a Hellenized individual and lost trace of his his um his 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 nationality. For example, over here in the UK, um, I'm just gonna deal with what we got over here. You have um Caribbeans going back to the 1950s or even beyond that, all right? You got Jake that's been here coming back and forth since the time of slavery all right now they they could still be dark skin and everything but guess what they're so far gone within the nation this nation that they're they're british all right and they basically have uh, um you know um amalgamated themselves with british culture all right so they do everything that's british and they don't have even though they're dark you know they may be dark skin look like a jake or even light skin or they could say yeah my forefather he came from america during world war one and settled down or he was a slave he bought his freedom and then came over to the uk because he had talent and blah 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 but they're gonna identify as what british or english all right or scottish wherever they are they they're at but then it's the same thing back then you would have jake that totally just totally forgot about it and just said i'm 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 a greek 
all right? So they would fall under Helen as well, all right? But being a point, this is this is probably how they determine the breakdown of Grecians and Jews with Hellenistas because it's the only, this word, the word is used like three times and it shows you that it's been, and it, it's used twice within this one chapter, one being for the word Jews and one, I uh, say, uh, no, t sorry, once in this chapter, but tying this 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 um story of verse twenty nine to the Jews previously mentioned, showing you that they were Hellenistas. All right, so let's read on to verse thirty, which when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea, and sent him both him forth to Tarsus. All right, Caesarea is a coastal town. All right, and they put him on a ship down to Tarsus, which is Turkey. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit were multiplied. All right, so the Lord just kept on multiplying. Different temptations were popping up, but the Lord would show his hand through great acts, all right, changing and being the book of Acts. Show and changing the course of things when it seemed like it couldn't be done, and it came to pass as Peter passed throughout all all the all quarters, he came down also to the saints which dwelt at Lydda, all right, and there he found a certain man named Ananias, all right, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of palsy, eight is a heavy number, man. Four means mercy, so eight means double the mercy, or right, mercy twice over, right? And even the name Ananias, when you look it up, it goes back to it means laudable or to be praised, right? Which laudable means to be praised, basically. And um, we're gonna see why. Verse thirty-four, and Peter said unto him, Ananias, Yahushua Mashiach maketh thee whole, arise and make thy bed, and he arose immediately. And all that dwelt at Lydda, 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 and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Laudable, praise the Lord, all right, commendable, all right. That, that act that was done through on Ananias was basically done for, to commend the Lord, a commendable act, all right. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is Dorcas. What interpretation would that be? The Greek interpretation. Right, Tabitha goes back to the uh, the Hebrew, Tazabah, sorry, Tazabaya, all right, which basically means a row, all right, but also it could mean splendor, you know, dealing with a row, like, um, what's the other word you can call it? A row, there's another word that's escaping me right now, but, yeah, that's the Greek version of of uh, Tazabaya or Tabitha, which is Dorcas. It means the same thing, a row. You know, the splendor of a row, the way it runs and the way it's swift and elegant. All right. This woman was full of good works and alm seeds, alms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died. And when they had washed, they laid her in the upper chamber. In an upper chamber, and for as much as Lydda was nigh to Chopper, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men desiring him, they would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went uh, with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made. While she was with them, but Peter then put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed, and turning him to the body said, "Tabitha, arise!" All right, and she opened her eyes, and she, when she saw Peter, she sat up, and he gave her his hand, and she lifted and lifted her up, and when he had called the disciple, the saints and widows present, presented her alive, and she was known throughout all Joppa. All right, and many believed in the Lord, and it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa, 
when one Simon the Tunnel, all right, saving his spiritual that he called her by a Hebrew name, because he, he spoke about Thor because the interpretation, but when he saw the type of right, tons of all right, showing you, you know, what spoke of in the book of Ecclesiasticus, things being other than Hebrew, all right, they have a force in them. So with that, I pray you're edified to the next one. Say shalom, shalom.